We have one of the most interesting and challenging jobs in the world uh, is to train creative people how to be even more creative. So uh, what we do is we, we provide trainings and programs for companies such as Google, such as advertising agencies, uh, McCann, BBDO, banks, cellular companies, uh, either helping them on specific project to solve a specific marketing or communication problem or training creatives to think even more crea creatively. So how do we do that? We developed some uh, creative thinking tools, which I'm going to present some of them to you today. And they are based on an understanding that behind the most creative and the most innovative ideas which are created anywhere in marketing, in technology, in communication, if you look at the skeleton of the idea, you will see recurring thinking patterns behind different creative ideas. So what we do, we try to identify those patterns. And for example, um, when we look at the Cannes Lion winners every year, approximately two-thirds of the awarded ideas, we can identify a recurring thinking pattern, one of 10, 12 patterns. But what is more interesting, when you look at the creme de la creme, the Grand Prix, and the gold winners, those who are considered by the creative community as the most creative, the amount goes to 81%, uh, which is quite shocking for some people, but on the other hand, quite encouraging for the rest of us, which means that if we can tune our mind to think within a specific direction, we are more likely to come up with a new innovative breakthrough uh, idea. So what I'm going to do now is present to you several uh, cases. Um, they are all uh, award-winning ideas, so don't be um, disappointed if you know them already. And I, what I want to do is to ask you, seeing those three cases that I'll present now, try to figure out what's the common thinking pattern behind those three different ideas. So the first one is an idea for uh, a theater um, comedy in Spain, where they invented the paper laugh uh, as a way to face a problem of higher prices, higher taxes on culture and on uh, theater. They created this idea. Paper Laugh, the first comedy shows where you only pay for what you consume. We fitted each seat with a facial recognition system that detects the smile and proposed the following deal to spectators. Entrance will be totally free. If the show produces no laughs, you don't pay anything. However, if you laugh, you have to pay for each smile. Each smile produced is worth 30 euro cents, something that in this day and age is quite a reasonable price. At the end of the show, the spectators could check their laughter account before paying and even share it on social networks. And so that no one would cry for having laughed more than they could afford, the maximum amount to pay was 80 laughs for 24 euros. The average price of the ticket increased by 6 euros. The system was covered by the main national media outlets, and this produced 35% more spectators. Each paper laugh show produced 28,000 euros more ticket money than was normally taken. Currently, the system is being copied in other theatres in Spain. A mobile phone app was created as a system of payment, and the first season ticket was launched for the number of laughs, not shows. But we should also not write off the paper cry. <laughs> or paper what the fuck system. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, if you have been earlier in the presentation of the, the beautiful presentation of Scott, uh, you probably remember one of the things that he said that I really like is whenever we do create a new idea, we create news. We create a story that people will share which will go much further beyond the advertising, limited advertising budget that we have. So, those are good examples. The second idea is coming from France, Intermarché, one of the leading um, uh, retailers, supermarket stores. And they were uh, struggling with the fresh juice category because actually there is no, there is no, um, they have no 
uh, USD. It's the same juice. Actually, juice, uh, fresh orange juice is a commodity. Everybody buys the same oranges, squeezes them in the same way, sell them, refrigerated. How can they make a difference? And they came up with this idea. Tumarche, one of the largest supermarket chains in France, has launched the freshest fresh orange juice brand ever created. A brand whose name is in itself a proof of its freshness. A juice brand whose name is the exact time the juice was made. Yes, the name of the brand changes every minute with every bottle of orange juice made. People like the freshness of the juice. So much so, that in the first three days of the campaign, our fresh orange juice sales multiplied by 4,600% per store, and overall in-store traffic increased by 25%. And the media liked the freshness of the idea. 50 million media impressions were generated in the first three hours of the launch. Amazing innovation. Uh, remember, what's the common pattern? And the third idea is coming from Switzerland for MTV Mobile. It's a um, ask uh, help to create a new way to engage um, locals with a uh, mobile phone using uh, texts and they came up with what they call the emography project. What you write normally looks like this. But now with MTV Mobile you can add a little emotion. So for each of the eight basic human emotions, we created a special typography. The imographies. The confetti font, made with exploding confetti to express surprise. The crying font, made with falling tears. The keyhole font for curiosity. The middle finger font, to show your contempt. The living maggots font to say it's disgusting. The panic font for when something scary has happened. The broken glass font for when you're really angry. And a font to kiss the world. The emographies can be used via Facebook app and microsite. Select the emotion you're in, type in your text, and post or send your message as a video link. The target group really embraced this new messaging service. Over 2.8 million messages were sent during the first two weeks, and the market share increased from 18 to 26 percent. Okay, so three very different idea, each one uh, an innovation of its own, freshest, freshest fresh orange juice, paper laugh, and the emography project, yet they share a very clear common thinking pattern. Can you identify it? Please. Speak loud. The person who raised his hand? No? Again? Interfa interfaces changing the price. Uh, but not in the case of the emography, there was no price involved, neither in the juice. Didn't affect the price. All right, so something with emotions as well. With emotions, you're close. A lack of the it creates emotions in a way, but it's not about it. Please, the uh, person next to it. We have another question. Uh, I think it's about re-engineering a very basic idea. So it's just taking something and re going back to the roots and recreating. I agree. I agree. But what is the common? Think about the three cases. What was there before? And the innovative idea after. What did they do in between? What's the common process that they all share? They all did a very similar approach uh, to innovate. Please. Yeah, I have an answer, but I don't know. Uh, I think they all respond to the need of the people. I agree. Every yeah. innovation should respond to a certain need, but it's not that. Okay. It's not that. Okay. Yes. Anybody else? We have one more. Thank you, Igor, for uh, running some around. Some sort of uh, gamification, maybe. S gamification? Ga gamification, maybe. What was the gamification here in the in this one? Not really. Uh, 
I'm not saying that you're wrong, but I'll... Please? But I want to introduce a new way of looking, please. Uh, just stripping down of, to one single USP, so that you have fresh, you have emotion, and you have love. Yes, they all express a very uh, specific benefit for people, but still it's not it. You see, we are in the challenge room now, eh? this is what we like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, says the, uh, it shows the actual product and the, the end result that the user or the consumer... That's true. It. This is the result, but we are interested in the process, because as creators, yeah. what's the process we are doing in order to create something completely new? I have one more. Please. Is it that they basically change something? Uh, for example, in the, in the first place, it was the, the time. They basically change the, the brand uh, to be different all the time. So in the second time, there is a new shift that basically combine the emotion with something else. Okay, good, and very good. And I think that's maybe the, the second pattern that uh, basically they change the way the people pay. They pay. pay right, they right, pay. you are very close. Thank you very much. I saw one more, no? No, I think we are there, Igor. Okay, 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 I will get back. To <laughs> <laughs> um, as the last person said, we call it dynamic connections. And the idea here is to create dynamic connections between variables of the system which were never connected before. So the, 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 the challenge here is that we usually take the existing relations between variables of a system as fixed. And when we want to innovate, we add a new feature that wasn't there before. Here it is not to add a new feature in the beginning, but to scan the relations between variables of a system and asking ourselves how can we create new relation, new connection, dynamic connection, where v one variable is changing, also the other variable is changing. And this is for a very clear purpose to innovate and in the case of advertising, to promote the brand idea. So how it looks here, never before the price was connected to how much you enjoy. The price was fixed, it was depending on age, depending on day or night, weekend or so, if it depends on anything. But for the first time, they created a dynamic connection between how much you enjoy, in the case of a comedy, how much you laugh, and the price that you pay. Juices, the name of the brand, was never connected to the specific hour where it was produced where when you think about it, when you create fresh squeezed orange juice and you sell it in a supermarket, the hour of production is critical because this is a sign of freshness. The more it is fresh, the better you like it. You don't want to buy a bottle that sat there half a day, if not a whole day. So they were courageous enough to connect the name of the brand. The name of the brand is changing according to the time of production. And in the imography, never before, except the smileys and the cryleys and all those things that we add, there was never a connection between the emotion that we want to express and the kind of typography that we use. So dynamic connection is really helping us to translate traditional currency into brand-related currency, to create a new currency which is the essence of the brand idea. If it is freshness, if it is joy or smiles or laugh in comedy, or if it is emotions. So each time, according to the objective, we ask ourselves what are the existing relations between variables and how we can play with it. In order to give you a small sample of how it works, we distinguish, we make, when we try to do it, when we do it, uh, internal variables. Internal variables are all the variables that are totally under the control of the manufacturer. As a manufacturer of orange juice, I have a control over the price. I have a control over the amount uh, of juice. I have a control over the size of the bottle. I have a control over the label. I have a control over the, the ingredients, the kind of fruit, etc. So everything which is 100% under the control of the creator, we call it internal variables. And on the other hand, external variables are all the other variables that we want to influence, we want to have an impact upon, 
But by definition, we do not have control. We do not have control over the age of the consumer. We want to influence it, but we don't. The same bottle can be drunk by an old or young person. We don't have control over the hour of using it. We don't have a control over the emotions that people express while they consume our product. The distance between each other and all the infinite number of variables that we could possibly influence, but we don't have control. Therefore, we call them external variables. And what we do is we list the internal variables, we list the external variables, and we play the, with them. We ask ourselves, is there a connection today between the price and the size of the mustache of the person in the room? <laughs> Apparently, no connection. I saw when you book a, hot, a room in Marriott, no connection. Is it interesting to create such a, uh, a dynamic connection? The size of the mustache will influence how much you pay, for the better or for the worse. Is that interesting? Maybe, if you want to do an event for hairdressers and so on, or if you want to do another kind. So we take things that we usually don't connect, and we try to create new dynamic connections, and therefore innovate and have something new to say about the product. Is that clear? Just to give you an example, we can also play with two internal variables, because internal variables, by definition, are, are under our control. The time of production, we can control it. We are the manufacturer. The name of the brand, we can control. It's our brand. So creating new dynamic connections between two internal variables that were never connected before, all of a sudden, we have a new innovative idea which makes the brand, without any product innovation, but just thinking innovation, creating a new value, a new currency for consumer, which is very relevant. Paper laugh, connecting the amount of laughs, the number of laughs, which is an external, with the price that they pay, which is an internal, and here again, the kind of emotion which we cannot control, if the person is happy or sad or angry, but we can control what kind of topography we can supply, we can create for that person. All of a sudden, texting becomes really emotional and meaningful. Any question until now? Because uh, this was supposed to be a 15 minutes presentation, and we are over 15 minutes but I was then supposed to give one hour workshop in another room, but in the other room there was no screen and loudspeakers, and they told me, let's combine them, let's create dynamic connection, let's connect the speech and the workshop together. So if you have any question, please ask. Give him a warm applause, please. Thank you very much. Very interesting to see. We'll see more of this. Uber is using it. Dynamic pricing is using it. Mm -hmm. Fashion retail has no clue if they have to discount 30-70% in the first week or the second week. They have no clue. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I want to thank you for now. You will do your uh, workshop hereafter. Um, um, I'm now going to close the, the, okay. the challenge. So I want to uh, thank you, first of all, thank you. To, uh, to be here uh, in the challenge room. Mainly because with you, we could challenge the status quo of business, marketing, and innovation. For here, the challenger session is over. I want to thank you all very much for participa participating and being here. Of course, Digitimia continues. There is a lot of workshops for the women. If you want to join Jonathan, you know where to stay. I hope to... Sorry? From Jonathan? Yes. You can sit and keep your own seat if you want to. For the rest, thank you very much, and I will love to see you later or at the end of the day. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Can I have the mic? Yeah. For those who are interested, um, for in the next 20 minutes, I will present two more uh, tools, so you're welcome to um, stay for another 20 minutes, seeing two other uh, techniques of innovati innovation. Um, yeah. W what is the question, please? The external variables. How do you select them? 
you select them according to the problem you want to solve. If the problem you want to solve is a problem of communication, you want to have more uh, people coming to the theater, for example, you want them... So what kind of variables are meaningful in terms of attracting more people? If it is advertising, what is the brand idea that you want to communicate? You want to communicate that, that we are the brand who really stands for fresh juice and vegetables. That's the idea. So you select the variables accordingly. If the brand idea is we are close to people, we understand their emotions, we are connected to their emotions, it matters to us, then you will create, you will list those variables which are somehow connected to emotions. So the purpose of the innovation project is the filter according to which you select the internal and the external variables. Okay? Good. Uh, do we have the presentation again? <laughs> yes, that, we are here. We are here. Okay, great. Uh, any more questions before we continue? No, still, that's it. Thank you. So, um, okay. Um, we want to do. Now, I'll present to you another um, uh, approach to innovation. And again, I'll share with you three cases. Um, and your task is to find out the common pattern. The first one is coming from Germany, from a small organization who raised money from uh, population in, Germa in Germany to help um, uh, populations in the third world. And they were fighting with the problem which is called donation fatigue. Donation fatigue is people being indifferent about donation. There are so many organizations who cater for the attention of, of us, and each one wants a few euros for that project, that project. We don't pay any more attention. How can we create attention? So they created what they call the social swipe. La sound, please accepts credit cards, the social swipe. When a card is swiped, the resulting donation can provide daily bread for a family in Peru or help an imprisoned Filipino child return to a normal life, all for just two euros. Although it sounds simple, synchronizing the digital poster with a complex card verification system was a challenge. When the card was swiped, a secure process quickly authenticated it and activated a film sequence on screen. This all appeared streamlined thanks to specially developed software. With a little investment, they raised 10 times more money than they planned originally. That was a huge, huge success. Uh, the second case is coming from uh, Dubai. A small pizza producer wanted to increase loyalty of uh, existing uh, clients and also hopefully cater for some new one. So, and they approached an advertising agency with a very small budget, $9,000, and they asked them to help them with, uh, with advertising. But the agency came up with a better idea, uh, which what they call the VIP uh, fridge magnet. Take a look. Yeah, I want one veggie pizza. Mushroom and peppers only, please. Okay, okay. Uh, so one pizza, mushroom, pepperoni, sir. No, mushroom and peppers only. Yes, 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 pepperoni. Okay, but what size you want? Adesso ti insegni una ricetta. Dammi pure un po' di aglio, cipolla, basilico, salcici, pepperoni. Che bella pizza che so fa. Ma che vuole di mangiare? So, here's how we cooked it up. The VIP fridge magnet is delivered directly to your door. It's loaded with your pizza preference based on your order history. Set it up once with your Bluetooth, 
using any mobile on any platform, including that old Sony. Then you just push the button and enjoy your favorite pizza. An SMS confirms every order. If you make a mistake, you can cancel it easily. And if your favorite pizza changes, just reset your preference online. It's VIP pizza delivery that's fun and simple. This is the best thing ever. Has anyone out there ever had a pizza emergency? It's like the Batman hotline for pizza. Here's what I do with the VIP fridge bag. Aha, uh -huh. push, done. I don't have to talk to the Again. trolley. Even if I didn't live in Dubai, I kind of want it on my fridge. Just to see. We're a small pizza place here in Dubai with a really small budget. We need to increase our sales. Okay, uh, I'll cut it here. It was a huge, huge success. They sold 500% more pizzas. And after a few months, a big American company bought this uh, uh, innovation. And now they became very rich. They don't have to produce any more pizzas in Dubai. Maybe they still do it for fun, but they don't need to. The third idea is a much smaller idea, but I think very interesting. It's coming from um, a television station in Panama and an advertising agency who wanted to raise the awareness of the authorities, the local authorities, about the problems of the bad conditions of the roads. Uh, I've never been to, to Panama, uh, apparently a lot of uh, potholes, and nobody does anything about it, so they came up with this idea. Right, so again, the question to you, three ideas, apparently very different, what's the common pattern? But now Igor is not here, here you will have to shout. I agree, how do you change it? We, uh, we changed the, the usage. For example, the credit card, they, when they pay, they basically cut the bread or something like that. Okay. Uh, with the button part, basically, previously there was no button just to, just to order a pizza. And there was no button that is changed just mm -hmm. to notify for uh, holes in the ground. I agree. Okay, what else? What's, what's, again, a common pattern to those three very different ideas? Please. Yes, over there. The mic? Um, I think all three cases uses uh, physical objects to, uh, to achieve a particular task uh, through technology. I agree, but in what way? Think before and after. How did the innovation came? Uh, yeah. I okay. have no answer on that. Okay, please, here. Yeah. Sorry? Simplicity. I agree. When we see the end result, it looks very simple. I agree. What else? But that's the end result. This is not the creative process. Please. Uh, I think they all create uh, awareness. They do. That's the result. Again, what's, because if you brief your agency or your team, I want you to create awareness. You don't really help them. You just give them the objective. So what's, what was before and after? There is a clear process from before and after, which is the pattern? Please, over there. Yes. You, yourself, yes. Reducing friction, solving the problem. Again, this is the result. This is not the process. Please. People? Uh, people? That's again the result. 
Actually, I think that uh, it creates uh, incentive uh, to to buy more or to to that's make an true. That, that's true. But again, this is the result. We want to know the process. We want to know what. If you are creative and you have a problem, what do you think on? You don't think on the result. The result is the objective. What do you do in order to get the result? Please. Introducing how, what is the missing link before and after? Okay, I'll show you. When you'll see it, you said simplicity. When you'll see it, probably you will say, oh, he's right, it's so simple. We call it relocation. Relocation is very simple. We take one component from one system where it is usually part of, and we relocate it. We put it into a new system where it is not expected to be. And through the relocation, we create all the effects that you talk about. Okay? So just uh, when we relocate, we have to know from where to where. So in advertising, if we work in advertising, we create, we define the system. The first system is the product and the, or the service. The medium that we use, is it Facebook? Is it television? the point of purchase, the event, the world of user, anything to do with user through the stages of consuming uh, 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 the product. So what we do is we take one component, the swipe machine, the credit card terminal, which is usually at the organization, was relocated to the medium, to the digital billboard. For the first time ever, people could pay by swiping, swapping? copying the, the, the billboard. The order button, we usually perceive it as integral part of the website. You buy on the website. There you do the order, online, on the website. Who said? Why not take the order button outside from the medium and place it somewhere else, on the fridge of people at home, which is very convenient. You don't have to go online. The technology is there. Everything, all those ideas, the technology exists already. What doesn't exist is the thinking, and usually relocation is very challenging because we perceive an object, any object, be it um, a tablet, be it a chair, be it a bottle, we perceive it with the components in the known structure. We know that the bottle is like this, Water is inside, not outside. The cover is on the top. And we never think, what if we relocate the cup and put it somewhere else? It doesn't come to our mind because we, when we think of the object, we perceive it as a whole. We have this, what is called, structural fixedness. We tend to perceive system in their known structure or object in their known structure. Relocation challenges it. Ask us or advise us to challenge those fixedness uh, structures and to ask what if we take one component from the system and put it in a completely different system. So for example, the tweet, sending the tweet, we believe that sending the tweet is here, right? Because this is my Twitter system. So the sending is here, is who said? Why cannot we relocate the send button from the Twitter to somewhere else? And in this case, to the world of users, people driving cars, getting annoyed because of the pothole, what if we make each pothole sending the tweet when somebody drives on it? So we say, amazing, right? And we say, wow, it's so simple, right? That's the idea. The idea, the relocation and dynamic connection, they challenge us to rethink our fixedness of thinking and try to connect things that were never connected before or try to relocate objects, components, from one system into another so as to create a new benefit, to create awareness, to create a brand story, to solve a problem, whatever the task is, relocation, dynamic connection help, can help us to overcome our own fixedness of thinking. Any questions about relocation? Do you have five more minutes to see another, yet another tool? Yes. Okay, good. 
Um, here is a beautiful idea coming from Brazil for a school, an online school of language. They teach English online for youth in Brazil. The problem, specific problem that they faced is if you are a young person in Brazil, girl or boy, and you want to learn English, you could find online uh, schools who would uh, teach you, but you would not, unless in, you live in the big cities, you wouldn't have anybody to practice. How can you practice English when there are no English speakers in your village or town? So they came up with this idea. We created a tool that connects our students with seniors in the USA living in retirement homes. Hello? Hello, hello. Hello. Oh. Melissa. Hi, Dick. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? How are you today? I'm very excited to be doing this. It's, it's the I, first uh, time that I'm talking with someone from another, another country. Do you have sisters and brothers? No, I'm one child. Only one? Oh, you poor fella. I live with my old brother. He has 23 years. Do you know, instead of saying he has 23 years, you could say he is 23 years old. This is your dad? That's me and my wife when we were young. Oh, you were good looking when you were young. And you're still good looking. <laughs> because I wanted to put better my English. Well, you do very well, I must say. At the end, the video of the conversation goes to a private link on our YouTube channel for a teacher evaluation. And that's it. You are my new granddaughter. And I love you. I love you too. And if you were here, I would give you a big hug. Oh yeah, let's hug. Bye. Beautiful, huh? The second idea is coming from um, uh, uh, a t tank of thinkers for Heineken, and they try, like any other brand, to help with the serious and dangerous problem of drinking uh, uh, while driving while drunk. And they came up with, um, the, the team in question came up with uh, an amazing uh, solution, never heard of before, so many solutions we have seen, uh, which is this, take a look. Introducing Safe Stand from Heineken International. When people enter a bar or a club, instead of a traditional hand stamp, they'll get a safe stamp, a flat microchip that sticks to their hand using temporary tattoo paper. The microchip, originally developed for diabetics, attracts ions and sweat to measure blood sugar levels. Using the same mechanism, Safe Stamp will measure alcohol content in sweat as people go about their night. If it reaches 0.08, the legal driving limit, or higher, a small LED light on the safe stamp will glow blue to let them and everyone around them know that they are no longer safe to drive. Since each microchip only costs a few cents to make, it's an easy, low-cost way to curb drinking and driving. Through safe stamp, Heineken can not only help people have a good night, but also help them have a safe one too. I don't know if you understood. Uh, this uh, idea was using the same technology which exists for many years for diabetics. There is um, um, an ingredient that you put on the skin to measure the level of sugar in the blood. And the level of sugar is also indicator for level of alcohol. So use, they use the same uh, uh, device, the same uh, technology, which is 50 years old at least, but now uh, combined with the stamp in the bars. So this is the second idea. And the third one is coming from Momondo. Momondo is a search engine for flights uh, online. A lot of competition, you know, Expedia, Skyscanner, Kayak, and many others. How can they make a difference in social networks? They were asked to find a way to connect with people on Facebook via their application, but to add another value which will make uh, uh, choosing flight with Momondo 
more fun, more entertaining, and more relevant for people. So they came up with this idea, which they call Friend Compass. Take a look. Meet Friend Compass. Turn your smartphone into a compass and see where your friends live around the world and the cheapest flights to visit them. Friend Compass uses your phone's GPS location, the Facebook API, and Momondo's search engine to instantly find the best flights to visit each of your friends. Sort your friends in the flight search by price, distance, and weather. Discover and share highlights about your friends, such as your cheapest and farthest friend to visit. And book a flight with a few taps, or send your friends a heads up. Friend Compass challenged traditional flight search with its new, fun, social dimension. And was quickly shared worldwide via profile pages, news feeds, links and blogs. The Friend Compass campaign inspired traveling worldwide simply by using friendships. Turning this, this and this into destinations. And the result? Friend Compass generated almost 13 million media impressions in the first week of launch. It has transformed Momondo's business, as instead of people just searching a few flights at a time, they now search flights to each of their friends on Facebook, which on average is more than 250 people, or more than a thousand percent increase in searches generated for Momondo per user. Right. So, what's the common pattern here? The common trick here? Again. The... Uh, language exchange, the uh, safe stamp, and the Momondo uh, friends compass idea. Do you find something in common? They are very different ideas, yet they share a very clear pattern of thinking. Please speak loud. I agree. They are all reusing existing technology in a new way, but they don't only use technology technology in a new way, they use also something else, which is even more elegant than that. Yes? Human interaction is the result. Again, we ask ourselves, what's the change before and after? What was there before? What's after? What is the change physically? What was changed physically? I mean, tangibly, you could see, not what the results in terms of emotion, awareness, and so on. Anyone else? You're tired. Okay, we'll have this, and uh, we'll go to have coffee together. You'll go to have coffee, I'll, take a I'll rush to the airport to take a flight. Uh, uh, we call it new tasking. New tasking, very simply, is assigning a new task to an existing resource. So when we apply new tasking, usually, correct me if I'm wrong, when we are asked to be creative, to innovate, usually the mind goes very click, quickly far away to search for a new technology out there, to search for a new feature that was never in our product, to search for a new mechanism, a new color, a new game. The mind, when creating, goes very quickly far away to bring the new idea. Whereas here, in the framework of new tasking, if you use this tool, the challenge is to stay with what we have, to scan the resources that we have already, and to ask ourselves, can we assign a new task to something which exists already? Okay, so very briefly, take a look here. The stamp is always there in the pubs. Since the beginning of parties, of discos, everybody gets a stamp when they go drinking. But the task of the stamp is to recognize the person. The question here, if we apply new tasking, is can we assign the stamp a new task to help us to know if the person is ready to drive or not? Okay? And if we ask ourselves the question, the technology will come rather quickly. We will ask, can a stamp let us know? So can we use the stamp as a kind of a measure of the level of alcohol in the blood? Yes, there is that technology. The, the creative leap is not so far when we think of the stamp which is already on the skin. Are you with me? Right. If our task is to uh, find somebody to train, to coach people, to speak to people, 
and we do it in the internet already. It's an online school. Who else on the internet, on the web, speaking already great English, has plenty of time, doesn't need to get paid, is bored and is looking for people to speak to these. Then the idea to think of communities, elderly communities in the States, in other English-speaking language, is not so far. But we don't ask that question. We ask, what kind of technology can we give to people to educate themselves? Here we don't need technology. We need people to speak to them. And when we use new tasking, when we use new tasking, we are using what we call the closed world. We make a kind of a circle around the system that we have already. What do we have already? We have already kids. We have already computer. There is already website. There is already internet. Everything is there. How can we use those existing resources, but for a different purpose? So new tasking make us, help us systematically scan the resources that we have and ask ourselves, can we use that resource to solve our problem? Can we use that resource to do something that will help us to communicate the brand idea? So we look at existing resources, but with a different mindset. Usually, we overlook this question because each of the resources in a system, correct me if I'm wrong, think about what I'm saying, don't agree with me automatically, we perceive it together with its known function. When we think of a chair, what's the function that we think of? Sitting, right? So we, we overlook the options of a chair to do something else. The chair could do many other things. But we say, ah, this is for sitting. So we ignore the possibility of the chair being something else. Okay? So the stamp in the bar, it has already a function. The function is to know if the person paid or not, right? But who said, maybe we can give it a new function. So it helps us to overcome what psychologists call psychologic, um, sorry, uh, perceptional fixedness we perce of functional fixedness. We, term, we tend to perceive objects by their structure. This is structural fixedness. But we also tend to perceive object by their structural fixedness and by their functional what they function for, what do they do. New tasking help us to overcome this fixedness and ask us, it does, the chair is doing already a function, but can it do another function? The stump is doing already a function, can it do another function? So we assign new tasks to existing resources in the Momondo, the friend compass, there are already in Facebook lots of friends. It's part of the network. You have a bunch of friends. We never think that friends can become destination. And actually, this is, that's the reality. Each one living in a different city, in a different street, in a different country. Why not transform friends into a funny, funnier, more entertaining, more engaging way to use as a new currency for destination. So you take the existing resource of friends, but you give it a new task to serve as a destination for the search engine. And all of a sudden, it becomes really, really social and really, really engaging. Even if you don't want to, to fly tomorrow to Berlin, you would check, ah, how much would it cost me to go to visit Angelina tomorrow, right? How much would it cost me to go to visit uh, Mohammed in uh, Cairo next week, right? So all of a sudden, you become curious about your friends, not just as friends, but as destination. Are you with me? So, uh, we have to... Um, um, I was planning to have another small workout session with you, but as I told you, if I'm not rushing to the airport, I will miss my flight, my next friend, actually, my next workshop. Uh, so, we, uh, we say goodbye now. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to have you here and wish you a great end of um, uh, Webit today. Thank you. <laughs>